This is a basic low pressure misting pump package. It's in a 12 by 12 inch enclosure. That's four inches deep. It's using a diaphragm pump, so it's a low pressure misting system. Um, has a few just basic components in it. As you can see on the edges here, this is actually the input connection. It is plastic uh, with an input ball valve. Goes into an input input side of the pump. Now the this particular setup has unions, brass unions on each side, and some space in here in order to get the pump out in case it needs repairs. So all you have to do is loosen that union, loosen that union, loosen the four bolts that uh, hold it down. Very small, eight uh, eight thirty two millimeter bolts and the pump will come out. Uh, the cord is is here is short so the pump won't come out very far but you just disconnect the other end of the cord um, you know take take the plug off of it and you can feed the cord through replace the pump. <clears throat> now on the discharge side there are several different things and you can't see them all because they're hidden behind that gauge um, that gauge is 0 to 300 right now. It's, you know, it says it's at uh, 75 psi, and I'll explain why it's at 75 psi. Um, but underneath that gauge, there are several different items. First, um, off this this cushion clamp, and I think you can see it right down here. There's a cushion clamp that holds this assembly against the wall over here. There's a 3/8 inch nut here. Uh, underneath this cushion clamp is a check valve and that's a one-way check valve going out so that has the ability to hold pressure back um, and that's what it's doing right now it's at 75 psi it's going out a line and going out to a solenoid valve at the other end which is 80, 80 feet of the line uh, <clears throat> so that that check valve holds pressure so it doesn't have to build up uh, as much the second time around when it starts back up. Also underneath that uh, gauge is a pressure regulating valve. You can see just a little bit of it right here. Um, it's a valve, it's a regulator or a bypass. Actually it comes off of this T here, goes down, and then there's a line underneath this pump that comes back to this T on the input side. So that's a regulator that bypasses fluid to maintain proper pressure and we'll show that to you here shortly. Also underneath the gauge is an actual uh, bleeder valve we'll call it. And here it's this black line down here. And it is a very small ball valve and what that's used for is if this pump gets airbound, say you get air in the system, and once it gets airbound you can't overcome this system pressure here with this check valve. You have the ability to open up that valve over there, bleed the air out of this head, and as soon as the air gets out of that head you have the ability to uh, build pressure back again and it will it'll, it'll go back up in pressure. So that's another uh, item that's actually underneath this gauge on the ball on the on the back side is a ball valve and that ball valve is before the check valve which is holding the pressure back so when uh, when the, piss, the pump is shut off the, the way it is right now there is no pressure or very minimal pressure within this assembly here uh, all the pressure stops right at this check valve that's what gives the this ball valve which is on the low side of the check valve, low pressure side of the check valve, the ability to bleed this uh, pump and any air that might be bound within the pump. So that just kind of sits right back in there. So that's um, those are the items that are on it. I'll start it up here now. 
Now you can also see that this is the actual discharge line over here. Uh, that's a quarter inch, uh, a quarter inch uh, quick connect fitting. But that quarter inch quick connect fitting is out actually onto a three eighths inch NPT brass uh, bulkhead fitting that you can attach any any type of uh, device onto it. Uh, the input side is a quarter inch bulkhead fitting, um, and but that's the only. Uh, that's that's the way it's set up right now. Electrical cord coming in. So I'm going to plug this in. We'll watch the pressure come up. And there it is. It's regulating right at uh, 150 psi. And um, as you can see, if I pull the, uh, the power off, it's staying at 150 psi. Well, that's because I've got this actual discharge line shut off, so there's nothing going through it right now. I'm going to set up a nozzle here, here real quick to actually... To, uh, uh, push some water through it. And there it is. You can see that it went down. The actual uh, nozzle assembly does have a solenoid valve and a pressure switch on it, which actually shut this, uh, shuts the, uh, the, uh, pressure off at 120 pounds. It, it'll vary between 100 and 120 pounds depending on where it shuts it off. Um, and if I start it back up you heard a little clicking going on yeah, it looks like we've got a little air. But, oh, I got this valve off right here. That's why. There we go. So that was the supply valve. Um, so you heard that little clicking going on, and that was the actual solenoid coming in, turning on. And if I pull the power back off, you can see that the the uh, solenoid will bleed down and there the, there is where the solenoid uh, actually turns back on again or shuts back off. I'll turn it back on. And then here's the pressure regulator that I talked about. I'm going to get in a different position to turn that. Brought it back to 150 psi, and now I can turn it up. And up to 200 psi. Typical range for this pump is about 170 psi, 170 psi, 75. That's where it's meant to run at. Now, one other thing that I should, will note, well, well, first of all, I'll show you the pressure here. You, here's the, the nozzle that has uh, some uh, mist coming out of it. Oh, a little air bubble there. But one other thing to note is that this pump is running on a variac, which is a variable transformer. Since this particular pump, uh, or this pump motor, is a, uh, oh, I forget the name of it, but it's, but it can run on a, a variac or a variable frequency, uh, a uh, variable voltage transformer, and it right now, the pump is only running at 80 volts. 
So it's running at a low uh, RPM. It's probably about a third to a half of the normal uh, frequency, or normal RPM. And um, what's nice about that is you can turn the, the pump down and it'll operate uh, a bit slower and it'll last a long time. In fact, this pump is, is a, uh, a uh, non-continuous pump it is, is not meant to run all the time. Um, there's another word for that. Oh, it is, it's not continuous duty. Uh, so it, it's not meant to run all the time, but if you slow the pump down like I'm doing right here, um, you could probably get it to run at a continuous duty uh, uh, interval if you get it to run all the time. Now I'm going to turn up the, the voltage right now. Like I say, it's at 80 volts, and you'll hear the motor uh, start to ramp up. There, now it's at 100 volts. So it's it's ramping up, and now I'll go to 120. And that's its normal, um, if you were just to plug it into the wall, that's what it would sound like. Again, pretty quiet. I'll turn it back down now. Again, we're back at 80 volts. And you can see if I turn it down lower, the pressure will actually start to go, go down because it can't keep up with the flow of the nozzle. But that's actually very low RPM, but you really don't want to run it there. If you can run it at 30% of rate of speed, that's a pre pretty good value. Uh, but here we go. And you can see we're starting to, uh, we're at a very low speed now. And one of the indications that um, the regulating valve here is not working anymore and we're going all out to the nozzle is the vibration of the gauge. This is uh, somewhat of a positive displacement pump. And when um, the pump is running, um, if it's not bypassing, it will pulsate the gauge. And you can actually hear the pump running at the speed that is consistent with this pulse. I'll let you listen for a second here. So that's the, it's really the same, uh, this is pulsing, same RPM as this pump. So, uh, that's a nice little pump package. That's about it. Um, it does the job. It'll it'll do uh, six, eight, ten nozzles, depending on the size of nozzles that you use. Won't do much more than that. Um, but it's a nice, uh, quick, little uh, high pressure pump that you can get some get some halfway decent pressure out of. But like I say, we have her to 200 psi. When you're up at full speed. Uh, and you crank up the regulating valve, you can get it up to 250 PSI, but that's not recommended for long periods of time due to the fact that uh, it's only rated, that the pump assembly is only rated for 170 PSI. Uh, and the motor has a amp draw of 1.1 amps, is full load amps, and really that's reached at about 150 PSI. So, um, so that should do it. Um, uh, that's it for this demo. Talk to you later.